And that's what keeps me up at night. I see a lot of hurdles being put in place without a lot of people lining up to jump the hurdles. And I worry that we're just going to have a false start here. We can't. We cannot. Po- Polkadot can't <laughs> take cannot, that right no, now. Parachains right. can't take yeah. it. Developers can't take it. We got to keep going. Space Monkeys blasting off with Nate Hamilton and Katie Butler. They're folks from Distractive who are looking to take over some of the marketing and media responsibilities in the ecosystem with the Web3 Foundation Decentralized Futures Grant. Guys, welcome to the show. Nice to have you here and welcome to Space Monkeys. Thank you very much. Thanks for having us. I know about Distractive from Moonbeam, Pure Stake days. Yep. Can you uh, help catch everybody up on where you've been up to this point? So, I mean, largely doing a lot of the same things that we were doing when we were part of Pure Stake. So mm-hmm. just to, um, Nate and I were part of the original team that helped launch Moonbeam. Um, Moonbeam launched in full about two years ago now. And so as part of that, the vision for Moonbeam was always to sort of continue down this decentralization path. And of course, one of those major milestones is decentralizing the contributing teams. Uh, Nate and I kind of created this weird BD marketing combo agency as part of that. I say weird because it's like marketing and Nate currently, (laughs) but uh, it actually has been really complimentary and it's worked out. So from, from the perspective of most community members, not much has changed. We're still active marketing contributors to Moonbeam. Mm -hmm. Um, Right now we're starting to get to the point where we're looking to take on other clients. And so I think the word that we've tossed around a bunch is serendipitous that there's an opportunity to contribute directly to Polkadot, which, of course, is where we spent the better part of the last four and a half years. And so we've basically already built this agency. We're just starting to figure out how we want to grow. And the timing is right with this new opportunity that's come up. So you folks have already been decentralized before. Here yeah. You are swooping in to save the day in the chaos. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like decentralized <laughs> is such a loaded word. So yeah, it's, it's hard that's to... That's why I used it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so let's just kick things off. Um, it's hard to like to really figure out where along that timeline we are. But at, mm. at least as it stands today, there's lots of teams contributing to Moonbeam that all have different leadership, different control, and different you know, for core focuses. So BD and marketing is one entity. There's also some BD and marketing resources at the Moonbeam Foundation directly. There's an operations team, a DevRel team, mm-hmm. um, and of course an engineering team. And so there's all of these independent entities all contributing to Moonbeam. And that's been going on for the last six plus months. Yeah. Awesome stuff. And Nate, you're more on the BD side? Yep. Yeah, so I was kind of the original BD lead for Moonbeam with okay. Derek, uh, yeah, yeah. and so he and I worked very closely, and uh, Katie and I used to sit together back when we had an office. We were, we were like a team of like seven. Uh, but yeah, I was the original kind of salesperson, if you will, to kind of help get Moonbeam going, work with Derek, make sure that we were kind of getting teams in, helping teams grow, and figuring out how to best kind of engage them. Well, Moonbeam is probably one of the most successful launches in the ecosystem, even to this day, probably the most users, pretty phenomenal stuff. This kind of void that's been created yeah. with this decentralization at Parity, we had a whole marketing team. I don't know. Do you know how big that team was? I've heard different numbers, but yeah. I think somewhere between 40 and 60, depending on who you call marketing, Holy community, big. all these other teams. Sure. The, the BD team, I think, was pretty big, too. Yeah, it was like maybe eight. 10 something well, that's that. smaller than I thought. not huge still. But, okay but still. okay so we're talking about like 50 people uh yeah. potentially that we're trying to fill a gap and this distractive grant here is this going to be on the bd side as well because we are speaking with um transistor next yeah. week we'll yeah. have them on the show i know they're doing a big thing uh ingo at kilt is doing a thing with Cytale. Yep. um so are you covering that as well? No, or? no. As currently constituted, we're not looking to take on BD, but yeah. you know, ultimately that can change depending on what you know the ecosystem wants, depending on what Web3 Foundation is kind of in need of. We could look at kind of supporting that. I think we really just want to focus on kind of the core tasks that you know we've outlined in the forum posts that are really more focused on marketing. And you know, Katie kind of mentioned it. She and I work well together because ultimately she comes up with a lot of the ideas around kind of how she would position things, how she would take it. And I think my stance is like, can I sell that? Can I, can I like, does that make sense from like a BD person? If I'm talking to a project or developers that want to build something, 
do I think I can like verbalize that and make that interesting to a team? So yeah, yeah, that's yeah. where I think we kind of do have this pretty good synergy to make sure that I, I bring more of the sales side of things and she's more of the idea person. Okay. All right. Let's talk about the scope. Where do we draw the lines here? What are we responsible for in this uh, proposed grant? I think my perspective on this is I don't expect to feel and look as corporate as probably Parity has executed on Polkadot's messaging in the past. But I do think that if we're going to start communicating Polkadot more clearly, it needs to be a really simple message and we need to all be saying kind of the same thing. And so I would like to have Distractive be that glue in that ecosystem. I use this analogy probably too much of a school of fish. So I'm not asking to have control over anything. I'm just saying I will volunteer to talk to all of these different teams. I'll help kind of swim us in the direction that we've agreed upon and work with these teams to give them feedback, help them come up with ideas, help them come up with plans to execute in any particular way. So that's sort of the biggest component of what we've thrown out there. The second is to be sort of this lean startup marketing layer, which is funny because I think some of the, the feedback we've gotten from the community so far is like, how can such a thing exist? Don't you have specialties? How can you, you know, have so many different concentrations and and specialties in a lot of different areas. But, you know, we, for Moonbeam, we've been working on Moonbeam marketing with a pretty lean team of like five Mm -hmm. for a long time now. And so you get to that jack of all trades specialties where you do kind of work on lots of different things. And so I'd like to see a world where we can have a team where when it comes down to it, we're, we're helping define event strategy. We're helping define messaging. We're helping define visual brand, but we're not necessarily owning it in maybe the kind of tight-fisted way that you've seen some other brands manage things in the past. Sure. We're just helping to kind of coordinate and collaborate with the teams that are also contributing to the same things. Okay. I think I understand. So let's say there's a team that wants to create a a series of events. Maybe they would work with you to get the messaging right and everything like that, but you're not going to actually execute the event. Exactly. Right. Right. So just to give you an example, we've been coordinating with a team called Blockhouse. Folks may know them. They're bread and butter. They got their start in Tezos. Hmm. Um, And so if they were to, you know, work on a a larger event or if they were to work on um, the Polkadot event strategy for the year, who would they go after? What kinds of events should we be looking at? What would our presence there be? And so they would be defining, in many cases, the actual logistics that go with events. But we want to help them, like this North Star. What are we aiming for? Who do we want to talk to? What are the audiences? And that sort of thing. So we want to help with that. Um, Realistically, we also want to get stuff done. So we plan to have coordination and execution capabilities too. So it's not just, hey, what should the message be? But like, here's messaging guidelines. Here's PowerPoints for the BD teams to use if they want to. Here's maybe workshops where we teach people, you know, what we're hearing, what we're seeing is effective in terms of communicating Polkadot. Okay. So I do think it is going to be a little bit broader in terms of um, how we disseminate that message and how we help form it. But Hmm. a lot of this stuff like it, it hasn't exactly been done before. <laughs> so we're trying to figure out what exactly that would look like and what's the most useful place for distractive to plug in. Yeah. 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 I mean, we're hoping to help ease some of that bumpiness as Katie and I have been in the ecosystem for four and a half years. We're really well connected to Parachain teams, builders, Web3 Foundation, Parity. So we're hoping that we can kind of help bridge that gap as decentral. We feel like decentralization is kind of like a stepping approach, like stepping down versus jumping over an entire staircase. And so if we can kind of come in and provide a layer where it's like, yeah, it may not be full decentralization from day one, but we can kind of help in that process. I, I think we can help kind of ease some of that bumpiness that we kind of anticipate when you kind of move away from an entire team of 50, 60 people. Yeah. So, I think what's really interesting, uh, one of the interesting pieces that you said there was talking about what's working between other teams. So you're actually looking at results and you're passing that information along because we can lose a lot of efficiency by everybody kind of working in their own silos, right? So this is something that you guys will be doing too. Hopefully. And even just facilitating some sort of conversation between these teams, especially Mm -hmm. regionally, we see a lot of silos. So the Asia teams aren't always communicating with some of the Western teams. Um, Certainly with the community, a lot of the community teams are sort of the front door to some of the bigger movements that are happening in crypto, but they're Mm -hmm. not always tied in or connected to what's happening from a marketing perspective. And Nate and I feel that acutely because we were among the first ambassadors. And so like we remember showing up to meetings in 2019 where it was like, all right, well, 
what do you guys have going on? How can we help? And it was like, oh, well, you know, we have, um, you know, an event coming up, East Denver, whatever it was. And so here's how you can contribute to that. But it wasn't always like pushing us to contribute into uh, in a more tangible way. And certainly, I don't think we were really providing, maybe Boston just wasn't yeah. a hip happening scene from a crypto perspective. So maybe that's why we weren't so, so instrumental at the time. Um, but we weren't really providing the information back in a way that I think was that meaningful. But I'd sure. love to see the community, particularly ambassadors, be able to do that. Um, and all these different agents that are that are going to form as part of the funding. But even in like the parachain teams too, I think there's a, you know, we, we've been talking a lot lately about a potential role. And again, I want to make it clear, like we, this is in, you know, uh, we're just starting the process of taking this to the Web3 Foundation. We don't know what services they're going to want. We don't know what mm. the scope of this is going to look like. It's mm-hmm. just what we've kind of put out there is our vision, and we'll kind of see where that kind of ends up. Um, but one of the things that we've been talking about lately is, you know, a role or two specifically that are are just on engaging the developers in the ecosystem in these teams and getting feedback. What are they building on? How are they building it? How are they messaging it? And how does that tie back to Polkadot? Because ultimately, I feel like a lot of what was going on was kind of Polkadot building its own kind of message and brand when you had all these 50 parachain teams out there doing their own things. And could you could you make it like more of a cohesive kind of we all build together? And can we tie this together in some way, shape or form that they can get benefits from building here and Polkadot ultimately gets benefits from it, too? So I think someone that's really like engaging with these parachain teams and the builders to make sure that. The messaging that you know we think is important, or that parody thinks important, or Web three Foundation does that resonate with the builders here? Because if it doesn't, that's an issue, right? So that that is something that we feel strongly needs to kind of be focused on is engaging with the teams that are building here. Okay, so how about the distractive team? I mean, there's the two of you. Uh, do you have other people in mind to be part of this team already? We do. Mm-hmm. So we there's about six of us right now, and that's the core Moonbeam marketing team and. and and Nate. And Nate. Uh, Plus Nate. We've, we've talked to quite a few people across the community. So that's both folks who are contr- currently contributing through parity or through other means, but also community members that have been sort of around, but sometimes sitting on the sidelines looking for a way to get in. Mm. And so we have, I would say, probably like 10 folks that we'd love to be able to bring on if this works out, depending on what the scope is and what Web3 Foundation is thinking in terms of services they need. But we have probably like 10 of the 15 that we've included in our proposal in mind. Um, no names that we've shared since we have a lot of logistics to work through. Uh, but if it works out, like we have some initial hires, we'd love to be able to move quickly, um, particularly because, you know, I think there's a lot of folks who've already been part of parody marketing in some capacity who are great contributors. Mm. And we'd love to keep them if we can. And it's going to be really hard to do that the longer this process drags out. But we've seen sort of an intention from the Web3 Foundation to move quickly, we think, but we'll find out soon. So what about pieces of marketing like um, like public relations, let's say? Uh, is this something that you would do in-house or is this something that you would work or you're hoping to work with an outside group? How do you see that? Public relations is an example. We very much hope there will be an outside group to help with this. Yeah, I, yeah. I personally don't have like a Rolodex of media contacts that I think would be a good fit for this. Mm-hmm. Let's just draw that through as an example. Yeah. We would probably work with BD teams, multiple who may or may not identify some big teams that are planning to deploy. And then we'll work with them to figure out, okay, well, interesting, why did they choose Polkadot? How does that relate to kind of the broader scope of what we're trying to do here? How does that fit into our message? And then work to bring those to the PR team, work with them to draft a press release, to Mm -hmm. help kind of understand what the pitch would be to media. But they would do sort of the pitch work. We would sort of try to take the messaging guidelines that we've already created and customize things, maybe write press releases if we have to. Um, I've written many and have no problem doing that. And so I think where I, I see teams get concerned around things like centralization, I, I kind of suspect they probably don't know how many hands a lot of this stuff touches behind the scenes hmm. because even in that very simplified scenario where there's one team and um, like one team deploying and and we have, you know, a very simple announcement to put forth, like there's already three to four different 
agents, polka dot, polka dot agents that would touch that and work on that. And so to me, it does seem very collaborative, but that's where I keep coming back to this need for cohesion and collaboration. Mm. Like, how are we going to make sure that we all know what we're trying to get out of this? And, you know, if we give feedback on brand or message that folks are, are going to say, oh, okay, yeah, I see that. That is what we talked about. And I can see how that makes sense in this context or whatever it is. What about things like the, I mean, there's a lot of polka dot branded assets like the website yes. and the social media accounts. Are you guys hoping to take authority over these or you're hoping to work with another group who's doing that as well? The authority part is where... T who who, uh, yeah. who has control, yeah. I know. Well, and so my perspective is I'd love to be able to contribute to social media. So that means okay. helping to create content that goes out on social media, helping to publish. Mm -hmm. I don't think authority is the word that I would lean on. Um, the way that I see it working potentially, and this is different from what I've heard other contributors pitch is that you know some party owns the website we have delegate or not the website the social media accounts we have delegated access so we don't have the ability to make substantive changes but we can publish mm -hmm. and in that world there's some agreed upon set of guidelines that we have to adhere to and anyone else who can publish would have to adhere to and that gives us some autonomy to say yep this meme is fine it's on brand or not but like intentionally not on brand if that's the case and, you know, we're not talking about yield or whatever the restrictions might be, or maybe we're only talking about tech if that's what, you know, everyone collectively decides is the direction they want for Polkadot. Hmm. And then we can just act on that. Um, what I fear could happen is I, I see a lot of conversations around control and authority and how do we prevent abuse, which I think is is probably correct to think about. But it adds a lot of steps and it adds a lot of bureaucracy. And so I'm pretty fearful of the world where things like, you know, a social media account might be c controlled by a multi-sig and you've got to wait some period of time for two of three to come on and approve a tweet that went out at 9 a.m. yesterday or like something like, I just fear for what that would look like. Sure, sure. And so I'd love to see rather than just a centralized contribution to, or a decentralized contribution to like a centralized entity that actually has decentralized members, which I think is how I'm picturing what's been proposed. I'd love to see the autonomy granted to some of the teams to try and figure it out and understand what their contributions could look like to have some ability to execute with af without having to have every little thing approved. And I don't know if that's the direction we're moving in, but that's what I'd love to see happen. Right. We've seen so many examples of collectives and new organizational structures people are uh, putting on the forums. You guys don't seem to be talking like that very much. What's uh, what's the deal? Like I mentioned, I think it needs to be a process to decentralization. I mean, yeah. if, and we've gone through it, right? You mentioned we've we've been decentralized once already, and we, we've seen some of the bumps along the road there. And, mm. um, you know, I just think that it needs to be a process or it's going to get even bumpier. And I yeah. think that like it, it may be in a time or a period where things are going really well for Polkadot publicly in, in the market and in developers eyes, maybe it's fine to take some of those risks and mm. fully decentralize and say, fuck it, let's go. I think there's a time right now that I look at it and say that there needs to be a little bit more of a process in place to start doing that, but ripping like trying to pull that bandaid off right now, I, I think would make things worse. Um, so we're all for decentralization. It's more of just like, a, do you go from one to 100 or do you go from one to 10 and then maybe do 100 as things, you know, get better as things maybe uh, are more in place because you're going from one entity to go to like 100. That's 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 a big gap. Well, and the greater concern I have, too, is I, I see a lot of this idea of, you know, there's a lot of control right now on what goes out from a marketing perspective. Mm. And so I see something like, well, instead of having, you know, one or two parties who are approving things, let's make it three or four parties who are approving things. And that's more decentralized, but it still has to go through this one thing, whether it be a collective or a coalition or or some other body that you need to approve everything. What I'd love to see happen instead is to give us clear guidelines to follow. And what that does is not only tells us what we can do, but it also tells parachain teams, for example, what they can do. And so instead of flooding us with tweets, and then this this collective has to turn down 90% of tweets, and you maybe don't get the feedback on why they are or are not approved. Yeah. Instead, you can look at something and say, okay, well, 
you know, the collective approved this list of things that we can do. And we've met these guidelines. So now when we submit, we probably have a good chance of, of getting through. Or we know that, you know, if if like the distractive team is following some set of guidelines, that this is okay to tweet or share. Mm-hmm. I'm somewhat less wrapped around the axle on like what the structure looks like. And I'm more concerned about how do we not create these bottlenecks before we can even get the plane off the ground. Yeah. And if they should exist, which I think there should be something that helps provide clear guidelines for folks, how can we use them as an enabler and mm. not a blocker? Right. And that's what keeps me up at night is I see a lot of hurdles being put in place without a lot of people lining up to jump the hurdles. Mm -hmm. And I worry that we're just going to have a false start here. Like we're not going to be able to really pick up momentum if it takes six, 12 months for enough teams to collect and form to really start contributing in a meaningful, meaningful way. Yeah. It's not time to have like a six month break from media or anything like that. Right. We can't, we cannot. Polkadot can't (laughs) take that right now. Parachains can't take it. Developers can't take it. We got to keep going. It needs to, there needs to be, you know, a, I use like the duck analogy, like under the water, the duck is swimming furiously and on the, on the water, it's at least just kind of floating along. (laughs) We, we got to at least try and keep that relatively stable, even, even though things might, uh, under the water or under the covers might be a little, uh, a little more uh, shaky, if you will. Yeah, fair enough. So let's talk about resources. You guys want to do a team of maybe 12 to start in, in an ideal world. I think you said Q1 would probably look like 15. Okay. Um, with potentially more to add. I have Mm -hmm. like a rough idea of what kinds of resources that might include. Um, But it's so, until we have a better sense of what kinds of services Web3 wants us to offer, it's really hard to define that. So I think we're kind of just in in limbo here waiting until we know more. How how is this possible? I thought they wanted to have these grants paid out by the end of the year. I mean, we'll find out something soon. Yeah? Yeah. I mean, hey, maybe they don't like us. We'll find out. But uh, no, I think that, you know, uh, I believe December 1st was the first day that they could start having interviews or things could start being talked about. I think that I I was looking at the application yesterday. I think it was the first. Um, So... I think they want to move relatively quickly and we'll see, we'll see kind of how quick they want to move things, but. Okay. And so without that being defined, I guess you don't really know what budget looks like yet. No, I mean, we've, we've kind of outlined our, our scope, but at the same time, until we start getting feedback from them, we don't, we don't know where their head's at, what they're thinking about, how I think it's going to be a committee that's kind of managing, uh, managing this. Um, so excited to kick off those discussions get a sense for like too broad, too narrow, less, more, whatever. And Mm -hmm. then from there we can work on, you know, how do we, how do we craft a proposal that is relatively sustainable? We're running a business. We want to make sure that, you know, we're not bringing on all these people and then, you know, we're, we're all of a sudden, you know, having to lay everyone off or something along those lines. But at the same time, um, you know, putting something forth that the Web3 Foundation feels is valuable to the ecosystem and that's manageable. It's also the community, right? Yeah. So the proposal period opened two weeks ago, I think, something <laughs> like that. And so, you know, the more proposals go into the forum or get sent directly to the Web3 Foundation, the better sense they're going to have for what other resources can help fill this out. What we sort of designed is like, we see lots of folks talking about particular campaigns or particular disciplines within marketing that they want to focus on. Yeah. Nobody seems to want to take on this role of trying to keep everything together and keep the train on the tracks. You guys are like collators, really. (laughs) Marketing collators. I like it. You should have named it that. Why do I even, I mean, I could just have him write our taglines. That's true. No, no. (laughs) (laughs) But you know, you're putting all the blocks together. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Good. I, I mean, I think that's right. And so I, I do want to differentiate, like, I, I don't any, in any way want to dictate what's in the blocks. I mean, I, I would like to have input and I have opinions, um, but I do think it is going to be a collaborative process to figure out like what it is that's happening, where we want to go and what that vision is. But once we figure out what it is, I'd like to be the one that consistently communicates it to people, makes resources available, has documentation, has like it's providing probably a resource center for parachains and pay as you go, not para threads um, so that they can access this stuff and to facilitate. I mean, it sounds really boring to say meetings, but to some degree meetings so Mm. that they have awareness of what events are happening and how they can get involved. And they have this ongoing conversation with other Polkadot contributors 
Um, so it's really much more of making sure everyone is talking to each other and has the ability to then contribute back into the conversation outside of, you know, the forum. So in a, in a more, I guess, some to some degree, a businessy way. Um, but I think we're going to have to see worlds where it's not just the polka dot marketing team in one fashion or another pushing information out to these yeah. teams that we have more of a push and pull and we're getting more information back out of them that we can then integrate into the marketing that we do. So it sounds to me like most of your budget is going to be paying for this team. It's not like you're going to have a treasury that you're doling out to people or anything like that, or it, is that something you're interested in? I, that's not currently in the plan. Okay. Um, I kind of think everything will probably continue to go through the treasury, yeah, yeah. but I hope that it will change a little bit in the way that it's done. And I say hope because I would love to see it more campaign focused, right? So mm. let's say one of the things I'd love to do is help to work on some of the bearish sentiment that we hear people outside of the polka dot ecosystem have about us. I hear the word echo chamber thrown out a lot. And so I'd love to help work on a campaign to reverse that. And I think it would take a lot of different teams all contributing to be able to do that. But the actual treasury proposal might include things like meetup events, but it also might include conferences, maybe targeting VCs or targeting other stakeholders who are beyond kind of the traditional scope of things. It might include some new messaging. And so what that will probably do is create sometimes bigger proposals, bigger treasury proposals. Mm. So I'm not sure the degree to which the community has the stomach for that right now. Well, right now we do. Yeah, well, Actually, maybe. I mean, right now marketing is going through like all the time. I know. But it might not last. That's the thing about OpenGov. Yeah. Yes. And also it, it's tough to then track back the efficacy of these things, right? Mm. And that's always going to be a struggle that continues to be a struggle, particularly in crypto where... Mm all of your KPIs are sort of going haywire depending on market circumstances. Yeah. Um, so that's always, I think, persistently going to be a struggle. But I'd love to see a world where we can get the community to rally behind initiatives that they believe in or don't. Mm -hmm. And that just makes it a little more cut and dry when you're looking at treasury proposals or even comparing two things against each other. It's like, well, I don't know. I think this audience might be a better fit for Polkadot than this other audience. So like I say yay to this one and nay to this one or whatever it is. Right. I mean, um, being on good terms with the token holders and seeing this you know, further decentralization ahead, I mean, maybe we'll learn more this week, but what I've heard is these funds are supposed to last for a year. Yep. yep. And then you're on your own, right? Yep. And marketing is not really, I mean, there's not really a business model in there if you're just going to stay with the polka dot and everything like that. So eventually this is going to go to the treasury, whatever team you build and everything, right? Yeah. I mean, that's kind of what we're anticipating. Uh, and so, you know, it's... We'll have to figure that out as we go. But yeah, I think it's an ever evolving discussion because I mean, marketing is generally a cost center. And so mm -hmm. how do you make that sustainable? Does it go through treasury is, you know, uh, yeah. So, I mean, distractive itself, we'll have to try and figure out a revenue model around we're an agency, right? And so we'll have to have other clients, things like that. So, yeah, yeah. you know, but in terms of servicing, you know, Polkadot, we want to make sure that we try and be as flexible as we can and make sure that we're as sustainable as possible. So we need somebody who is there to put all the pieces together. Uh, this is what we already have with parity marketing, but there is a sense of like weight um, where if you want to get something out there, you have to go through them yep. rather than working alongside of them. Yep. I think this is really neat because, you know, you could have, for instance, right now there's a, I see a bounty springing up in OpenGov and they want this bounty specifically for working with influencers of a certain caliber. And what they're trying to figure out right now is like, well, what do we tell them to, to talk about? Right. These are the sort of guidelines that, you know, we could be like, oh, well, what did distractive say? Yeah. And we can jump off from there. Right. This is kind of the idea. Yeah. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. It's just making sure that like everyone's kind of saying the same thing about Polkadot and then can kind of disseminate that message out there in terms of like what is the value prop of Polkadot. And yeah. then whether it's through influencers, whether it's through BD, whether it's through just general community sentiment, they're all kind of you know, singing from the same hymn, no kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Well, and I'd say, too. Even that is revolutionary for Polkadot, right? Mm. Because it was only a year or two ago, I asked the parody marketing team repeatedly how I'm supposed to be describing Polkadot because I was kind of going rogue and describing it how I think it should be described. And they're like, well, you know, we don't want to dictate that, right? Like it's up to the community to sort of interpret and define what Polkadot is. Mm -hmm. 
no wonder nobody knows what the hell it is. Like <laughs> right. it, we were all kind of singing our own tune. And of course, you know, as part of Moonbeam, I sort of work on the narrative that made sense for what we were doing. So at the time it was, you know, po- Polkadot has created this whole new way of building blockchains. Yeah, yeah. And so no longer are we these like siloed islands. We're all able to kind of interact with each other and talk to each other right out of the gate. And so that's how I was pitching it. And I was running it by the person who was the head of marketing at the time. And he was like, I don't know, sure. Like, we, we don't dictate what that is. And so even with this approach, I don't really plan to like, you know, in any way dictate what folks say, but like give them a starting point or at least, you know, if they disagree with the message that, you know, we've landed on with some of the other community teams, give them the data that we have and say, all right, well, here's, you know, here's the three or four audiences that we were targeting mm-hmm. each, hopefully with a customized message. If you think there's another audience we should look at, let me know. Like, we'll go talk to the BD teams and see what they're hearing from that audience and how we can start to to create a message for that group, too. And so I think in some ways we're going to be, we're hoping to be the team that people bring problems to. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, that's cool. I don't know if I want to volunteer for that, but... um, (laughs) And then we can we can try and find ways to digest that and, and put it back out into the community as like a resource that they can use. Yeah. Again, I mean, we want this to be as com- community led isn't the right verbiage that I'm looking for. But like uh, even this uh, having a specific role that is just very tied into the community and, and has like an ear to the ground to be like, this is what we're hearing from whether it's chaos DAO or whether it's, you know, the parachain builders, whether it's and just pure open gov, some of the, the proposals that are up, like what are the themes that are coming from grassroots and making sure that that is resonating and make mm-hmm. sure that that's kind of represented in a way that I don't think necessarily had been in the past. And so that, you know, again, we, we don't feel like this is going to be like distractive dictating things. It's yeah, more yeah. just trying to take the inputs from where they're coming from and say, this is what we feel like we're hearing. This is what would make sense. Take it, run with it. Does this make sense? And make sure that we're all kind of on the same page. This is super exciting. Well, I wish you guys uh, a lot of luck in your negotiations with the Web3 Foundation. I haven't seen a lot of, uh, well, I'll say competition in this area. Like you said, I've seen like a lot of kind of narrow uh, scopes. Um, something to bring it all together, I think would be really fantastic. So thanks for putting yourselves out there and um, putting yourselves forward to take on this, uh, this big mission. I really appreciate you doing all that and thank you for coming on the show. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having us.